Welcome to Get Stuck In. Plenty coming up over the next 30 minutes. I catch up with Christine Williams. He's got two live chances at Ascot and Willerby this weekend. But question marks over whether she's a little bit better in the spring, but she, she does seem exceptionally well at the moment. And Patrick Mullins, amateur jockey, whose father trains a few horses in Ireland. He's the one with all the improvement in my, in my book, so I think he could be very um, exciting. And it's Wellerby's big beating of the year. It's a Bet365 Charlie Hall chase. Is it going to rain? Is it going to stay dry? Let's find out from Clark the Course. John Drew Sanderson. We are good to soft, good in places, Niall. We've got, we've got a dry morning. We've had a very heavy dew overnight. Uh, it's a bright, sunny day, but not particularly warm at the moment. Uh, and that's sort of the general theme for the week, really. Um, modest kind of uh, temperatures. Maybe, maybe Wednesday might hit some 17 degrees. Um, very steady winds. Um, and perhaps, hopefully, some, some odd showers throughout this, mm. this week. And then maybe, at the moment, we'll forecast perhaps seven millimetres of rain on Saturday morning. So we'll just have to monitor that forecast and see what we can, what we can do. And, uh, and we know that the forecast gets it wrong plenty, but at the minute, like if the forecast is right, there's a bit of rain tonight. We're recording this Tuesday, so Tuesday night, a bit of rain. Friday and Saturday could be fairly wet. Uh, yeah, well, sir, Friday looks less wet now than it did 24 hours ago, but certainly at the moment, Saturday morning is looking like it, in the early hours of Saturday morning, overnight Friday, uh, that we could get seven millimetres of rain, which would be, would be fantastic if that stays on the radar. But as you've just said, these things uh, have a habit of changing um, sort of twice a day, if not more. So mm. we'll just obviously have to keep monitoring it. And, and if we need to sort of irrigate just to maintain the conditions we've got now, we've got time to do that. And look at entries, most welcome. A high senior and brave man's game. Two very, very, two grade one novice chasers that potentially, at the minute, hopefully, fingers crossed, look like taking each other on. That's good for the track. It's good for you, isn't it? Yeah, no, we were delighted with the entries, both Friday and Saturday. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of real tonic for the track. It's a real tonic for Bet365. And, and more than that, it's a real tonic for the, jumps, the jump season. It's a mm. good start to the season. And, you know, if... if um, if you if we believe what we read, and you know, there's no reason not to. That it looks like the you know subject to conditions being as they want them to be, as they are at the moment. Both those horses should mm -hmm. should come on Saturday along with the with the remainder of the of that particular race and the rest of the card, and we should look for a, a really substantial competitive afternoon's racing. Okay, it's time to get stuck into the Bet Three Six Five Charlie Hall Chase. Martin Dixon, unfortunately, he's at Newmarket Horse and Training Still, but we are thinking about him, and um, with his lookalike. We will ask him his thoughts in due course. But in the meantime, we're joined, delighted to be joined once again by Ben Linfoot and Dan Barber. It looks perfect, doesn't it, this weekend? Last weekend was good. We, we talked about the matchup Pied Piper mm. at Night Salute. Fingers crossed, the time of recording, it looks like they were a hoist in Europe and Brave Man's game are going to take each other on. And we're not going to have any Irish horses coming over spoiling the parties they did last week. I mean, it's looking. A bit of a head-to-head, -head, you'd say on the face. I think we know who the two best horses are and the two best prospects are, and I'm sure we may have views on to which of the two will be mm. more prepared to go on Saturday. I'm not sure it's completely cut and dried, but cracking to see what were probably the two best British novices, certainly over longer distances, going at it. Um, when the race was priced up, there were, there were joint favourites again at the time of recording. Who will go off favourite, Ben? A high senior, I think. Will it? Yeah, I think so. I think when you look at... His uh, Weatherby Farm from last season, where he beat the uh, subsequent Grand National winner. Um, you look at his Aintree Farm in the, in the spring, where he had Brave Man's Game behind. I think punters will probably latch on to t those two strands of farm and, and send him off favourite. I know Brave Man's Game, from the Ponicles he had, he's probably going to be fit and ready, isn't he? And that's a, another angle that uh, punters might look at. But I just think there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of fans of a, a high senior, the Lucinda Russell horse, and uh, I think he'll edge favouritism for me. Stable are forward, more yeah. forward than they have been probably for a few seasons, and obviously change attack. But I'm a bit like you, since from your reaction, I thought they favoured Brave Man's game just because Nichols has this is an early cup final. Mm. They've chinned us at Aintree, want to get our own back. It's not an easy one, is it? It's no, not an easy question. question. Doesn't that sort of put the whole race into context. Yeah. If you're struggling to decide which of them, and there are valid reasons who might go a favourite, I'm not sure it's a betting race at the top end. If I was going to do anything in this, I'd back Eldorado Allen each way. Was primed to go to win a Howland Gold Cup first season. It's an early marker horse for Joe. Um, first full season training, he'll want to have a horse ready for something like this, as he was last season. He won a Denman chase as the season wore on, and he was probably just over the top at Aintree. He's eight. 
and you can back him three places at this stage, mm. maybe it will cut up to under that and you'll probably get a place edge, but he was my way into the race and just sort of take the other two out of it. I know they'll beat us if we're not quite right, but I think we've got... Is he fundamentally good enough to beat them two on their A game? Probably not, but you, you're looking at that A game because Brave Man's game did not show it at Aintree yeah. and a high senior did not show it first time out last season. Mm. If you recall, they ran him in a proper race up at Carlisle at Colin Park, you and I will be there end of the month, and he was beaten or certainly looked like finishing held when he came to grief and... Will he be revved up for a Charlie Hall when they've clearly got Cheltenham and Aintree aspirations later on? And one thing about High Senior, he does tend to adjust to his right, doesn't he? Yeah. Over his fences. And he got away with it at Weatherby last year in a lesser race, and he got away with it at Aintree as well, but he might not get away with it if, if say, his Brave Man came on, on his A game. His best form, High Senior, has been flat left hand the tracks, yeah. Yeah. which he's going to get a flat left hand the yeah, track. Yeah. But there is room, no doubt, there's room for him to improve in his jumping. He's got a serious engine. Oh, yeah, That's one of the big th threads of the season. Like if, how high can this horse go if suddenly jumping becomes an asset? Because it hasn't been so far, no, has it? Hasn't. It was better at Aintree, but you don't see many top notches who are going to the right or putting yeah. in extra strides. If he gets that together, yeah. he is the best British train mm. stay. I don't think there's any doubt about it, but I just had doubts about whether he'd be slightly cold first time out, and I didn't think El Dorado Allen would be. Okay. El Dorado is the best way, at the minute. Certainly, yeah, yeah. Think, yeah, eight to one. I thought there might be one that shortens in here, Sam Brown for Anthony Honeyball. I think if, if just say Sham Blue was running, what price would he be for the Charlie Hall, do you think, Sham Blue? Yeah, I thought he would be running as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen him. I think he'd be, you know, a strong single figure price horse in the race and, and Sam Brown obviously he, I think he only got a pound from him at Aintree and beating fifteen lengths and He's, uh, he's fairly unexposed for his age, isn't he? He's yeah. quite lightly raced. Um, that was on good soft ground at Aintree. So I th he's only four pounds off the, the top two on official ratings. I thought he could be a shortener if he's given the green light. What about Christian Williams, Philly? She's done so well last year. Yeah, she's been, she's been fantastic, hasn't she? And brilliant in the Scottish National. Yeah. I just wonder if this might be a bit sharp for a first time out, but um, it's a, it's, it looks a good platform for her to, mm. to start off on. I tell you what, we can have a word with Christian Williams now. Uh, and uh, Christian, uh, how is she? Oh, she seems very well. We we galloped her last week at um, at Chaps, though she went nicely. So you put question marks over whether she's a little bit better in the spring, but she she does seem exceptionally well at the moment. She's in the London Gold Cup at Ascot. She's in the Bet Three Six Five Charlie Old Chase. I spoke to you the other day. You were thinking more Charlie Old Chase. Are you, are you still thinking that? Yeah, the the Charlie Hall was looking obviously very competitive and it was looking competitive before entries closed and then obviously Dan the source has not been entered, so you know, that's um obviously helped the race for us a little bit. So we probably I think she deserves to take a chance in the race. Deserves to run the level she, weight race. And then try and plan a season around that then. Right, see where you go afterwards. Some success story last year, wasn't she, from you know, grinding out in, in Eiders to, to go and a Scottish national. She was brilliant. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, we um, we thought she might do that in the Isle Chase, so that was great. And then for her to go on to to do various to do, to do what she did there then was was exceptional. And um, you know, Kitty's Light was a little bit unlucky that she went away because we had our penciled in as Kitty's Lights race at the start of the season. But Nikki, my brother, rides with my wings every day and. She was a little bit roughed up in Newcastle for a few days, but then she just blossomed. And a week after, she she started to fly again. Yeah. So Nikki said, "You probably need to run her in the race." And, and we obviously went up there with two two for the Scottish National. And she won. She won very impressively. Um, I I know you're limited with with stables where you're at at present, but has it made a difference to you? Is it is the sort of phone rang a little bit more? Yeah, definitely been a lot busier and. You know, you can see this year we're a little bit short on winners, but we plenty of horses running well in maiden hurdles now, second, third, fourths. So we've probably got a nicer type of horse now. So, you know, we look forward to the season ahead. Usually do well after Christmas. So, no, no, we're busy, busy all the time. And Kitty Slight mentioned her. She's in the London Gold Cup at Ascot. Is she an intended runner? Yeah, no, he's in good form. He, he hopefully will improve the runner chaps, though. He did so well last year without winning. I think he won nearly 120 grand in prize money without winning the race last season so it's wonderful for the owners but it'd um, be great if he gets his head in front this year he's only a six year old you'd obviously worry with a flat pedigree and he's not overly big whether um, you know, whether he'd be improving with age might be a doubt but 
we're trying to be positive. He's in a good heart at home. And yeah. Enjoy the ground too soft, so the ground should be okay there for him. Would he, or would my wings maybe more so, could she be a, a an entry horse, a Grand National horse next spring? Yeah, win my wings, I would have thought, would be the one for that race. He's a nine-year-old now. Um, the owners have owned horses for years and years, never never had a horse in the race. So, uh, you know, obviously the build-up to the race to look forward to, so she'll have a definite, she, she'll be the definite entry in the race. Mm. And we obviously know she comes into form that time of year, so... Mm. But... Uh, She's a good, strong traveller. She stays very well. Could be a race of suits, so. And what what's she like at home? When did you realise that you knew you had something? Oh, she's only small. I think she was nine nine thousand pound. Not sold at Ascot sales. So you can obviously imagine the. Um, she's not a big, big physical specimen, but she's always had a good attitude, great walk. Always likes to get on with her work, and she won a maiden hurdle third time out. So she wasn't the type of horse that needed a very low handicap to. Candy Cup mark to win a race. She she won a maiden hurdle impressively on her third run, and then a bit quiet then the following season. But we we had a fair idea that when we stepped her up in the stay and chases that um, that that she could be obviously didn't realize she'd go and I could chase the Scottish Nationals, but mm. we thought she could be a very nice horse. And she was just a little bit on edge at home for the first few years. So obviously good patient though, and took her time with her and. She started paying dividends and as a nine-year-old. She obviously did her winning before that, but obviously turned into a very good horse then last season. Mm. Oh, she's been a great great story so far. Hopefully there's another a chapter or two left in her book. Christian, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at Wellerby at the weekend. Thank you very much. Right, a horse to follow over the next days, weeks, months, season, whatever. I start with you, Ben. What is it? Captain Catty Stocknail, who ran in the three mile one furlong handicap chase at Cheltenham on Saturday. I thought he shaped really well. I thought it was an encouraging run uh, for, for his first go back. I think he needs a bit further. And he just got tired for me in uh, coming up the hill after jumping pretty, pretty well uh, throughout under Liam Harrison. Um, I think Fergal O'Brien might point him at that three and a half mile handicap chase at Cheltenham's November meeting where he used to run perfect candidate every year and th this horse could be the perfect candidate for that race because he's, he's a really strong stayer. Dan? Uh, Tiger Jet for me, yeah. running that conditionals race, first race at Aintree, I just thought he got racing too far out and he was made favourite on the back of a w win at Hexham, £10 higher but he went like he was still well in, yeah. more reserved ride, bear in mind he was a fair horse on the flat but he's completely jumped bred, maybe slightly shorter trip, he's, he's qualified for lesser races and I'll be Absolutely staggered if he can't win one or two more. I'm delighted to be joined on the line now by Patrick Mullins. Exciting time of year, Patrick, for all jump fans, but I'd imagine where you're based, a little bit more exciting. Yeah, yeah, this is the great time of year. Um, there, it is a, There's a little bit of purgatory about it. We, we obviously get going a bit later than everyone else, so all the winter horses are back in, but they're only just cantering away we haven't schooled them yet we haven't worked them yet um so we haven't got to look under the bonnet of too many but when you see the likes of Energamin and Alaho and Shaq and Basel Vega canter by in the mornings um yeah we're we're looking forward to it getting wetter and darker um you say cantering by you the lit you are cantering by you at the minute because uh, I saw you at Cheltenham at the weekend you, you had a, a foot brace on tell us exactly what happened for people that don't know Oh, uh, well, I was over in the Czech Republic to ride in the Paradovici, the Velka Paradovici, and I was running the track on the, the Saturday, the race on the Sunday, and I managed to, um, jumping down off one of the banks, I managed to spray my ankle. Um, so not only can I not ride around the track, I can't even run around it. Mm. Um, but anyway, it was fine. It's just, it's quite swollen, and I was able to ride in the race, thankfully, but we did. We managed to fall in the race as well. So um, I'll have to go back. Uh, I'll have to go back again to try and complete. Thank goodness I never rode in it, but I did go there about oh, 15 years ago. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The Saturday was flat racing. I don't know if that still happens, but it's it's well worth a visit, isn't it? It's fantastic. It's a great meeting. Yeah, the Saturday is flat racing. There's a couple of hurdles as well on the on the outside track, which the flat hurdle track is a bit like Mallow. It's flat, right-handed. Um, and then the Sunday is all kind of cross-country or, or steeple chases. So, like, you know, you have proper water jumps, you have stone walls, you have doubles, you have ploughed fields, big hedges, ditches, dikes, canal turns. Um, it, I think oh, it's, it's a been, wonderful location, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the year I was there, Jim Crowley rode Registrani, the favourite. 
and I was standing down at the taxis and he didn't even get as far as I fell off for about the second so I think that's when he went flat racing he realised he was he was rubbish at that time. <laughs> I didn't realize Jim had written it. Yeah, yeah he wrote the um, favorite. He wrote. She yeah. was a bit of a star mare in it, but yeah, he didn't get very far. He actually wrote a lot of winners in Italy, and you know, he used to go out far and and, and do really well actually. Some of the uh, yeah, was, in the banks. There you go. He had some wonderful tracks in the continent, Murano as well in Italy. Yeah. Um, Right, we, so we, we digress. Let's just let's stay to England and Ireland and, and uh, an update some of the stars. Fassel Vega, you've got to start somewhere. Why not Why not him? Yeah, he's come back in. He looks fantastic. Uh, Dave Porter looks after him. Um, look, he's he's a big, tall horse. He doesn't get awfully heavy. He's a bit more like Duvan, which was at the walk in the park in him. He's, he's a light-framed horse. Um, he's doing his too big away. We haven't schooled him yet, but he would have done plenty of schooling as a three-year-old before he came to us. Um, so I imagine we'll be starting him off over hurdles and, um, you know, knowing Willie, he'll probably enter him in, in everything. Bar- he can't enter him in the bumper, but um, mm. uh, he's, he's very good and very well himself at the moment. Where do you think his trip will be? Um, well, look, he's a real strong traveller. Um, he could definitely do two miles, no problem. Um, but I can't see any reason why he couldn't go out and trip as well. He settles very well. So, you know, that's a big advantage in a horse to go up and trip. Key Vega was obviously a four-time stairs hurdle winner in Punchdown, so she stayed. I think he's just going to be one of those horses that trip doesn't really, it mm. won't matter to him. He's very versatile, I think. I should mention fun, 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 first of all. For anyone who doesn't know it, won a bumper at Sligo. Tell us why we should mention fun, fun, fun. Yeah, um, brilliant. And so I, I bred her, I, I bought her, I bought her a dam five years ago, and she was in foal at the time. Um, and this is, this is the, the first foal out of it. Um, so bred her, owned her, and rode her. So um, she bolted up, won very well. It was a student race day in Sligo, so we got a good cheer p- crossing the line. And um, I did ask a few people had it been done before, maybe if I was a few siblings coming along to get the training license and anyone done before, breed, own, um, ride, and train. But I'm told John Thorne did it with Spartan Missile, oh, yeah. uh, won a few fox hunters, and second in the national. I think Fun Fun is very good, but I, I don't know if she'd be second in the Grand National. Uh, she's, she's not the biggest. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, ben and Dan alongside, so you were keen to ask about a couple as well? Yeah, firstly, what a creative excuse to try and get out of riding in Prague and sample some of the other parts of the city. Congratulations there, Patrick. Uh, El Fabiola's also interests me. I mean, it's, you could go on all day, couldn't you, with the prospects you've got, but El Fabiolo chasing this season, I guess. I'd imagine that's what we'll do. Um, like I said, we haven't got around to school them yet. I imagine we're doing that in the next 10 days or a fortnight. Uh, but he has the physique for it. He's a tall, strong horse. I can't see any reason why he wouldn't be a good chaser. Um, you know, he, he got going late last season. Didn't, get a, didn't have a lot of experience. Was unlucky. Looked very unlucky in Aintree. Um, You know, I think he missed the third last or did a horse fall in front of him. Um, and just got beaten and then was good in punch down. So he's definitely one that... I think is could be even better than his his, his form suggested. Hi Patrick, uh, novice chaser for me as well. I think I back to appreciate it for the Arkle last season. Obviously, he had a, a setback and ended up being trained for the champion hurdle. But um, how is he doing? Is he set for a novice chasing season? Has he been schooling? Yeah, I'd imagine that's what he'll do. I mean, look, he's the next point of points. We ran him two point of points. Um, we third point on Valen the first day, I think, and he would have been schooling before but the reason he ended up going for the champion hurdle was obviously he just got a few setbacks and we didn't want to waste his novice career very late in the season so um i would imagine all being well he'll be going chasing and i mean if you could draw a chaser it's him um you know he's i can't i can't see any reason why he won't be a better chaser than hurdler uh okay um we should talk sir gerhard woolly says fences he's leaning towards what what, what way do you lean yeah, I mean, um, he, obviously, again, he's another point of point winner, but so was Honeysuckle, so was Faheen. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, they, they can win champion hurdles. He was obviously quite keen when he won the Ballymore. The Ballymore is a great champion hurdle, um, a great champion hurdle yeah. trial. Awesome. Uh, I don't think, you know, I think he has enough pace for champion hurdles. So, again, we'd have to school him and see. Um, but, uh, I yeah, if, you know, Willie's obviously thinking of going chasing, but I think he could be a champion hurdler. So, um, like I said, it'll it'll depend probably on how, on how he schools and, and maybe how other horses school. But uh, if he was to go down jumping hurdle route, I think he'd have to be um, taken very seriously. He, oh, he disappointed him. Sorry, go on. 
No, go on. I was going, just going to ask you, more importantly, how often do you and Willie disagree? Lots? Regularly? Daily? <laughs> oh, hourly. Hourly, I would think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I think that's probably pretty normal between father and son. Yeah. Uh, but you were saying you think, well, you're thinking to see how schools, etc., and see how you get on. Yeah, look, it's hard to make any decision before, you, before we school them. But um, I was just going to say that, you know, he disappointed and punched them, but he did that as a bump horse as well. And, you know, perhaps, maybe it's a late season thing, but he might just be better going left-handed as well. Mm. Good stuff. Uh, Stat there, we should rattle down a few more, I see. That was in great form. Uh, looks fantastic. Um, look, I, I thought his performance might have gone under the radar a bit because it was a small field in National Chase. Beating Rumwild Fred that easily by that far was a huge performance. You know, to me, he's a sort of horse that could evolve into kind of a one of those Gold Cup types. You know, the likes of Nate River, Manila Rock around when National Chase mm-hmm. went on to uh, win the Gold Cups. But, you know, people are always talking about the Grand National as well, but is he going to have too high a mark for a Grand National? Uh, you know, I always think uh, now it can be done lately, but um, that's, I imagine he's going to he's going to be heading that direction. Try and make a go cup horse of him and mm. and have the guy national in the background. But do do you leave your do you blow your handicap mark and try and become a go cup horse? Mm. Um, the one thing we do know that Willie leaves one hundred percent to use the bumper horses. I ever ask him? He just just always says, "Ask Patrick." So we're going to ask Patrick. Nobody is watching. Nobody is listening. Give us a couple of names to pay for Christmas. Yeah, um, well, look, last year it was quite easy. I think we were we were, we were were shouting about Facile Vega, and usually it's the kiss of death, so that's how good he must be. Um, but yeah, like I said, they haven't worked yet, but a couple that stand out would be Chapeau de Soleil. Uh, he's a soldier of force horse we got off. When a point of point, got off Colin Bow, uh, beautiful black horse. He's one I'm looking forward to getting on. Port Hill is a chestnut Flemish horse. He's feisty, as chestnut Flemish horse can be. Mm. Um, uh, he's won, he was second at a point of point. I'm looking forward to him. Fancy girl is a chestnut, big white face. She won a, um, a mayor's point of point. Uh, she'd catch her eye, can't around, very athletic. Um, and Blizzard of Oz is the one I'm really looking forward to. Uh, now, I did see Willie said he might be going hurdling, but I might, might have to disagree about that. Uh, he was second in a um, listed bumper, split two of hours, impulsive dancer in Mercury. But what I liked about it was impulsive dancer is an ex kind of flat horse. He was in as a two year old. Obviously, would have been quite forward. Mercury came from France, would have been in training as a three-year-old quite forward. Blizzard of Oz, Harley Dunn was training him, and he came from a store sale. So for him to split them, he's the one with all the improvement in my in my mm. book. So I think he could be very um, exciting. Good stuff. We'll be a bit far away to talk about down roll next week. Maybe catch up next week and see what you're, you're thinking you might run. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, Willie generally doesn't have a whole pile there, but I think... You know, Kemboy will probably go. He might have a few for the mayor's novice. Say V, Nikini, maybe Carrigan and Queen. Mm. Um, but it, we usually have a small, a small enough team there. Like like I said, most of our winter horses aren't. Our winter horses won't be ready for it. Yeah. Good stuff. Patrick, fantastic to, to catch up. Well done with fun, fun, fun. I hope the food uh, continues to progress the right way. Exciting time of the year. We wish you all the best. frightening really it's frightening how strong Willie Mullins is good to hear from Patrick Mullins he speaks well he is just unbelievable isn't he what do you think the horses we didn't mention there yeah an ergamine <laughs> Alaho didn't get a yeah, shout incredible. the bumper horses that haven't run the bumper horses that they've lost a horse like Redemption Day that would probably break most stables mm. and they'll just plough on because it's unparalleled the strength mm. in depth it really is mm. um, they're giving the English trainers a chance this weekend and, <laughs> and, and where they'll be what are you two looking forward to most this weekend Andrew well, um, I'm looking forward to Ascot's card on Saturday. Yeah. I know we've, we've, we've spoken about Weatherby a lot, but there's some really good handicaps yeah. at Ascot. My best bet would be there uh, in the Burn Group handicap chase at 240, um, over two miles and a furlong. I like Gumball for Fergal O'Brien. We've already mentioned Fergal O'Brien. He's out in really good form. And I think this horse looks pretty well handicapped now. When you consider when he was novice chasing, he was rated in the 150s. He's down to a mark of 137 now. And his finest hour came uh, in a handicap hurdle uh, Ascot off a similar mark and I think he's he's well treated. He had a spin on the flat at the track at Ascot a couple of weeks ago and looked in really good nick so I'm hoping that uh, Gumball's back to his best and he, he might be a big prize for Fergal O'Brien. Okay, Ascot for you. Goshen might be at Ascot as well, be exciting. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't have him down as a chase. Word for down, but no. He's, he's going to be entertaining I think. Ah, he's his own man, he he'd be fine. He's got that, he'd be fine. He'd be fine. Authorised, he'll jump. Yeah. Says me, Bruce, the overweight thing goes over. <laughs> um, Dan, you? 
Uh, I'm sticking at Weatherby. Um, I think Molly Ollie's wishes has got a cracking chance right. of repeating the win in the race last season. We said last week how Dan Skelton has said in interviews that the three weeks behind, but the ones that have got a target mm. are ready and will be ready. And surely this is cup final territory for her. The favourite at the minute is Martello Sky. Stable not having many runners. I think she wants a trip. I think she's two and a half mile plus. I wonder if she might be a bit cold under uh, sort of drying conditions, potentially two miles. I thought three to one was, was a value bet, Molly Ollie's wishes. I'd, I'd be surprised if she doesn't go off favourite. And looking forward to hopefully the big two line up the Jordan Hill. Yeah, so obviously from a selfish perspective, I already mentioned El Dorado Allen would be my idea of the bet in the Charlie Hall at this stage, particularly if you can get that three places down to two by the time decks come through. But from the purest perspective, seeing mm-hmm. a high senior, brave man's game, this is this is round three, isn't it, of their private battle? Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, looking forward to it all. Thanks to Ben, thanks to Dan, thanks to Martin Dixon, and thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.